Renewing Lives and Restoring Hope. Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Trenton has been restoring lives and renewing hope for a hundred years. Established in the year 1913, Catholic Charities has been caring for the basic needs of families. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Rose Kimball. Monsignor Walter Nolan couldn't be with us today, but with me today to share about the history and the present day accomplishments of the truly life-saving organization is Executive Director Marlene Leo Collins. Welcome, Marlene. Thank you. Can you give us a little bit of history, because many people know about Catholic Charities, um, and they have some idea of what the orga organization does. But as you celebrate 100 years, um, maybe a little history lesson would be in play? Sure, be my pleasure. Um, well, since 1881, when uh, the diocese was first established, charity work has existed in this diocese. And uh, as you mentioned, in 1913, Catholic Charities, which at that time was known as St. Michael's Aid Society, mm -hmm. was established. And the first executive director of Catholic Charities at that point in time was William Doherty. And uh, I just love reading the history of Catholic Charities and how the charity work was established in, in, uh, in the Diocese of Trenton. And I reflect on what happened then and how things are either the same or different. Well, I just want to read a little bit because there was um, some history that was developed, uh, that was prepared um, it, probably in the late 60s. And I just want to read a little bit about what this document said about uh, William Doherty. It says, the church in every age has always advanced bearing the fruit of charity in her hand. In every period of her history, she has inspired armies of generous souls to dedicate themselves to work, to works of charity for man's spiritual and corporal needs. Such a person was William A. Doherty, the first full-time director of charities activities in the Diocese of Trenton. So I really stand on the shoulders of this man <laughs> who was really regarded very highly um, by folks who knew him. And um, now it goes on to say that in here that he started off working two days a week, but it wasn't long after that that they realized they really needed to do this full time. And he did two days a week, he was working uh, at, at another job in a, in a furniture store. And, uh, and he just, you know, began to expand the works of this organization, which was predominantly serving children, the aged, um, providing, uh, feeding the hungry, and clothing um, those that needed the, the naked, as we talk about in, in scripture. Um, the other thing that I found really interesting was uh, the principles by which they lived, because they, there wasn't, it, uh, St. Michael's was an orphanage, and they said right from the start, it was the principle of the newly formed society to keep children at home whenever possible. Institutional, institutionalization was to be the last resort, and today, we believe in the same thing. Right, so right. we provide mental health services, uh, people are moved from institutions into the community, and we work with individuals to make sure that they're stable and they can continue their lives in the community. And for, it's about bringing people to realize their full potential. And at that point in time, it was about helping families deal with the issues that, 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 that exist. Mm -hmm. um, and helping them move forward, but in some cases, they had children did um, uh, move into orphanages. And another interesting tidbit was that um, uh, Mr. Doherty worked from his mother's home yeah. at 36 Southern Street. We have offices on Southern Street in Trenton, so we're still, so you know, it. we're still right. in that <laughs> same type of a neighborhood. Um, I found it um, interesting that longevity of the employees uh, at that point in time, in fact, there was mention of, uh, of, an, of an employee by the name of uh, Ro Sarah Roach, who had been hired in 1924, September of 1924. She did case management uh, and administrative work and served uh, Catholic Charities, worked for Catholic Charities for 
30 years, wow. 34 years as a matter of fact. And to even today, uh, when we look at the number of employees that we have, um, they're 23 years, 30 years, you know, 10 years, 15 years. We celebrate, each year we celebrate uh, and, and recognize our employees for the number of years that they've served. And I'm always astonished uh, to see the long amount of time that people stay. And the reason they stay is because I think of the values that we uphold in terms of the sanctity of the human person and the dignity of, of, of the human person. And um, it, it's a ministry, you know, it's right. not just a career. Right. Um, another interesting point that I found in, in reading the history was the benefactors. Um, the benefactors um, that contributed to the, um, uh, the organization in order for them to carry out their mission were people who had a deep, profound faith and um, really wanted to help people. Uh, and it was their Catholic faith and Catholic teaching that animated their action to contribute to Catholic charities. And today that exists um, in Catholic charities. And um, I could talk about the numerous numbers of benefactors that contribute to us that do it because of the mission, our mission that is based in, uh, in scripture. Right. So that's just a, just a little bit of the history it, that I uh, learned as I was going through some, doing some of the research. It truly Catholic is. Charities. If you take a look at, like you said, some of the comparisons, mm -hmm. Um, between the mission and the length that the employees have stayed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. it really it really is a mission for everyone. Absolutely. Even the benefactors. Yeah. Um, yes. Earlier you said that you kind of reflected on its beginnings mm -hmm. um, and where you are today. Is there, do you notice any differences? Are there? So um, our mission is um, still based in scripture, mm -hmm. um, is um, animated by Catholic social teaching um, and you know, when I look at what, how, um, um, what happened then, they provided service. Uh, they uh, did, also did some advocacy because they, they really tried to shape uh, the policies and things that happened in, the, in society at that point in time. That's why they established institutions, schools, healthcare, you know, mm -hmm. orphanages. Uh, provided for uh, unwedded mothers, um, and, and there was a, a sense of community and community building, you know, trying to improve things in the community. And I think those are the three pillars that, uh, that we live by today. So is it done differently? It's done differently in that we're probably more professional now than, than then. There's much more of a focus on, the, on licensing, on, on ensuring people have certain levels of education. And I have to say that it was attributed to the evolution of, of Catholic charities by these individuals, because even in 1913, there was a recognition that that needed to happen. Right. And not only locally, but on a national level, we began to see some of that. And the bishops, by the way, it's very important to note that you know charity is administered and, and, and the responsibility is that of the bishop in the diocese. And so the executive directors are always appointed by the, the, the bishop. Okay. And that is true today, uh, even though we have a formal structure with board and, and those kinds of things. So there is that direct connection, you know, right. uh, to uh, our shepherd. Um, and, and there was, and so the bishops, even back then, recognize and Catholic charities agencies recognize the need for formal professionalism, uh, educating people in social work and those kinds of things. And so today we, we've bared the fruit. Right. We have highly professional individuals. Uh, we are certified by a national organization. So uh, that is like the good housekeeping seal for us. Um, and uh, we provide behavioral health services we still work with children, um, as we did back then in 1913, and we still provide food and clothing uh, for those in need. So uh, those are some of the vital services. Absolutely. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, your present-day position and how did you get there? What, what in your life's journey oh, brought you? Oh, good grief. 
Um, <laughs> so many things, you right? Know, <laughs> you know, if you had asked me 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, uh, whether I, I would expect to be executive director of Catholic Charities Diocese of Trenton, I would have said, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge job. Right, it um, is. And I would, I never did, but, but I think, um, frankly, you know, my faith journey mm -hmm. sort of led me and brought me here. Um, I have, since a young adult, have always been involved in, in charity, in, in, in the corporal works with my parish, when I was in college, you know, community. In those days, sometimes it was called community activism. Um, and it was always a passion, just a passion. Um, I worked in the Department of Human Services for a number of years. But even there, it was the reason why was because it was important for me to, to ensure that programs, government-run programs, are really serving people, really serving the needs of those most in need. Uh, and then I found myself at the New Jersey Catholic Conference with working for the bishops in public policy on social issues, good right. grief. <laughs> What, what a great connection. And, and it now. was just, and all of those things have really helped shape me, mm -hmm. have uh, really evangelized me. Um, I've learned so much. I was um, also director of religious ed for my, our parish uh, in Trenton, St. Joseph's. And I've learned much from others. And um, I got to this point where then this opportunity came about. I was involved with Catholic Charities as a board member formally. Mm -hmm. I love the mission of Catholic Charities. And um, so I thought hard and I prayed about it and spoke to a lot of folks and ultimately decided to, um, to apply for the position. And through the grace of God, I was offered this opportunity. Very good. Yeah. Um, and, and as you said, as executive director, you also have the wonderful opportunity of celebrating the 100 years of service. Um, so do you have big plans for this? So absolutely. Uh, we, start, we kicked off our centennial anniversary with a mass um, back uh, in February. Um, and that was wonderful. I thought, you know, it really made the connection of who we are as Catholic in celebrating the Eucharist and kicking off our, our year. We have a number of, of um, events actually planned, and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read <laughs> some of this. <laughs> um, we have a 5K run, so we wanted to get the youth involved, right? Because right. I'm not doing a 5K run. We uh, wanted yes, to get I'm, the youth involved. <laughs> I'm with you. I will cheer them on. <laughs> and um, so we have a, a group of young people who just took this on, and they're very, they love the mission of Catholic Charities. They do volunteer work. And uh, one young lady actually works in our, uh, one of our offices, and they've just taken this on and it's grown exponentially. And so they have a number of folks who are going to be attending at Mercer County on uh, April 6th. Okay. And a lot of this stuff, as a matter of fact, is on our website, which I'll share uh, at the end. Okay. Um, we also have um, a family event. Um, or actually before that, we have our Guardian Angel Dinner Dance okay. that we will again celebrate our centennial year at that point and we have that's our biggest fundraiser of the year and that's in September and then we also have a a walk and hope uh, family day that we will do in October and in between we'll do some fam some other uh, events with um, with uh, our or our um, employees just appreciating them recognizing them as well that's so there are a number idea. of things and all of that is on our website very good very and good. we also have a really neat video um, on our website that that goes back and forth between what happened a hundred years ago and you get to see one of the wonderful things you get to see all the religious I mean there was a lot of priests religious women who were a part of Catholic Charities serving right. in, in that capacity and then eventually it was moved into lay people but you'll see what happened a hundred years ago or 50 years ago and what we're doing now wonderful contrast so I encourage people to go on our website and take a look at that. Wow. Video. I mean, to celebrate 100 years and to continue going so strong is difficult, especially in these hard economic times. Mm, yes. Um, so, I mean, how, how, 
how do you attribute that? How, I mean, what do you attribute that to? Wow. Um, well, over the years, uh, we've done a number of things. Uh, we've, because of the change in our professionalism, we've been able to uh, apply for government grants. And this is a nice partnership with federal, state, and local government to actually carry out our mission. And um, we see that as a, a responsibility of society, right, right. To, to share. So we're able to do that. We've also done it through the generosity of benefactors, of donors, private uh, donors, foundations. Um, but we've also been very good stewards of the resources that we've been given. And um, so making sure, making sure that uh, our overhead is kept low, mm -hmm. you know, that the dollars go for direct services. Um, really looking at ways to, to minimize that cost. Now, we did, I'll have to say, struggle through a number of years where we've actually had to cut programs. So it's a constant looking at what we're doing, mm -hmm. how we're doing it, is it relevant today? Um, can we continue to support it financially? When we can't, we have to downsize. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, eliminate programs, and we've done that, unfortunately, over the years a number of times. And uh, just um, uh, be, be more efficient as well. So we are constantly looking at that in our organization. Oh, yeah, it's That's an ongoing process. Right. And, and in order to survive, you have to reevaluate and make changes. Um, can you share some of the stories of hope and healing um, that stand out to you? Sure. Um, I love visiting the programs. You know, you can get, I can get stuck in the office dealing with administrative work. But what really gets me going is when I go to the programs and I visit, the, I talk to the employees and I talk to the consumers that actually benefit from our programs. So I thought, thinking of, Jack, uh, uh, of Jay, who um, is in our, went through our behavioral health program and supportive services, and he said to me, you know, I went through a number of, of programs in, in, within the community, and um, it, they weren't working for me. And someone said to me, why don't you go to Catholic Charities? Catholic Charities could probably help you. We've heard about the fabulous programs. And he said, but, but they're Catholic, and I'm Jewish. Can I go to Catholic Charities? And they said, yeah, we can. He did come to, to the program. He did, did come to visit us, and we provided services for him. And uh, these are behavioral health services. Today, at that time, he um, had attempted suicide. He um, was homeless for a number of years. Um, he just could not get his life together. Today, he is living on his own. And this is after a period of time. Right. And he says, and he, I saw him recently, he says, you know, my children are really proud of me. And he had a family. Right. You know. Wow. And um, so it's important to know that Catholic Charities, we serve all people. You know, and some, sometimes people say, well, I'm not quite sure, you know, can I come to, to receive the domestic violence services if I'm not Catholic? Yes. If you're Catholic, yes. And if you're not Catholic, yes. We're serving people who are in need. Um, another young uh, a woman recently, uh, during the whole disaster, her husband, young, young woman, ch four children, wow. you know, under the ages of 10. Um, her husband died in March of last year, and suddenly, right. leaving her with four children to care for. She moved in with her um, mother-in-law that lived by the shore. Oh, no. During the disaster response storm, they lost everything, lost everything. And who did she come to? Catholic Charities Emergency Services. We were able to immediately provide her with some assistance so that she can get clothing for her children, so that they can get some help to stay someplace else because they had to move. They had to move to a hotel. Um, and then subsequently, I got a con call from a donor. Just sometimes these things, you know, the Holy Spirit works in, in mysterious ways. 
And he said to me, Marlene, um, I really would like to help a family. We have some money to be able to help a family that was affected by the disaster response. I had just been talking to one of our employees about this young woman. So I immediately called her and I said, is there anything else you think this young lady needs? And she has to go back to work. She had one child with special needs. And so there were all these things that we weren't, we could only help but up to so much. Right. This donor came <clears throat> forward and gave her a substantial amount of money for her to be able to, to help her family as she would get herself settled. There are stories that go on. Um, you know, uh, the kids that come to our El Centro program, you know, uh, in a community where um, there's violence. Right. Violence every day in the Trenton area. And they happily get off the bus and run into El Centro because they know they're going to get a snack, <laughs> that they're safe, right. you know, that they're going to get help to do their homework, that they're going to get some playtime. You know, before right. mom and dad or mom or dad or their abuelita comes to pick them up. And some of them, sometimes they don't want to leave. Right. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. So um, there are just so many uh, stories. Um, we, uh, another young lady, and I can go on, stop me. Um, um, she just left for Arizona. Um, another uh, woman who came to us uh, through the behavioral health program mm -hmm. and really had a very difficult young adult life, uh, mental health, and uh, finally came to Catholic Charities and over a period of time was able to stabilize her life. She started to work for us. <laughs> See? <laughs> she became a peer leader to help others with the same problems. Which is really awesome. Which is awesome. You know? She also became an advocate. So she would actually wow. come with us to legislators to talk about mental health services right. and the need for, for continuing of care because she experienced that at Catholic Charities and it helped her to move forward. And, um, and now she's moving to Arizona with her family and she's going to be getting a new job. And it, we were just in tears the other day, had a little lunch for her. Uh, to see how far she's come. Wow. And she said to me, you know, I went to the hospital to get some adjustments to my medication and the nurse that was there had seen me when I first came before I went into Catholic Charities programs mm -hmm. and she was stunned. She says, you know, I didn't think you were going to live wow. this long. So I think, thanks be to God, that um, our programs exist, um, that we're able to provide help to people with mental illness, domestic violence, people who are uh, low income, who need help financially or with food, children, um, uh, provide a safe haven for children. Wow. Um, and you just showed with that a, a last example that it's not just come in and do it for a little while, it's mm -hmm. to help develop them right. and, and to make them self-sufficient right. in the Absolutely. future. Absolutely. Um, with so many different nonprofits, I mean, you, you get a phone calls, mail, order, um, you know, emails. <laughs> How does, I mean, what sets Catholic Charities apart? Why should people donate to Catholic Charities? Or support? Charities. Absolutely. For all the things I just mentioned. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, uh, it, most donors look at, um, well, sophisticated donors look at how efficiently an organization is run, if you just want to look at it from purely that perspective, mm -hmm. and donors that um, d contribute substantial amount of money, pay attention to that. So they look at our 990s, for example, to see how we distribute our dollars. And 10% um, of our money goes towards f overhead. So we're very, quite efficient, and we've been recognized by New Jersey Biz and lots of organizations. We're certified, COA certified. Uh, so that for large donors, that's the way they go. For mm -hmm. the ordinary donor like you and I, <laughs> you know, right. that are Catholic, um, you know, we, we're, we're providing, we're carrying out the mission. We are the hands and the feet and the face right. and the witness of Jesus Christ here today. And so that's why I would contribute to Catholic Charities because I know through the programs 
and because we're Catholic charities and because we uphold, you know, to Catholic teaching, that we are faith-based, right. that we're faith-based. Um, and there, and it's not just really, I mean, there are a number of things that I ask people to do, if they can do. One is pray for us. Pray for the ministry. I don't see this as a career. I see this as a ministry. Um, and that we will continue to be able to offer those services. Uh, then think about um, the, that treasure that you have and how much you want to share that with uh, Catholic charities or with the Catholic ministry like Catholic charities. And another way is volunteering. We're always looking for folks to help volunteer in our various programs, especially emergency and community services program. Okay. So there are lots of opportunities ways. for people to right. be engaged with us, absolutely. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but, but we did touch on, a lot of people are familiar with the food, clothing, and shelter, sure. but not with the advocacy. Oh, so and that's such a huge and very important part, I think, of Catholic Charities, because we can t best tell the story. We have the experience. We know uh, we've learned from our consumers. So we do uh, a lot of advocacy. We have a, an office, external affairs office. Mm -hmm. We speak before the legislature. We monitor the state budget, the federal budget, when we need to speak about uh, policies that need to be changed that will impact people, low-income individuals, we do. Okay. Um, and then there's that advocacy for the consumer, you know, which is different than changing policy. And that happens too through case management and case work. So if you don't know how to, where to go, we help you understand that and sometimes we help groom you, okay. <laughs> if you will, right. or speak for you right. if you well, can And that's important. Right. Absolutely. Important. Yes. So advocacy, I think, is a really important piece of Catholic charities and a very important piece. And a piece I think that sometimes people miss. People miss. So. And, they, and people they can be engaged. We're on Facebook. Right. We're, we okay. have our website. Uh, we uh, have a, a, a link for um, um, legislative issues. So we alert there. people of certain things. Oh, absolutely, it's a very important. And nationally, we do, uh, the, our national office is very involved in that piece as well. Okay. Hopes, dreams. Hopes and dreams. For Catholic Charities. So my hope is that we will continue another 100 years. As Amen. I mentioned earlier, I feel that I stand on the shoulders of all of those individuals that came before me especially Bill um, Doherty, um, that um, we will be more connected to our parishes. We're looking at formalizing uh, programs around that and um, that we will just continue to do the good work of Jesus Christ. And that we will continue to support that effort. Amen. So thank you for coming today, Marlene. My pleasure. For more information about Catholic Charities or to find out how to get involved, please go to their website, CatholicCharitiesTrenton.org. Thanks for being with us today on the Catholic Corner, and God bless. Yeah.